it's it's inviting. The door open. Um, the money talking to BS walk, so you could definitely pay. But as far as like giving us citizenship, I was I was like, man, when you buy the land, if you're not a citizen, you got to go through a lawyer. So my lawyer started to hate because I bought some acres and I started chopping my pieces up for black Americans to come on my land mm -hmm. because I secured it. I went through the chief. I went through the elders in the neighborhood. Like I didn't I already learn. Don't go buy no land, nigga, and you ain't talk to the people in the neighborhood. Yeah. Because you might buy some and end up with problems you don't even want. You feel me? Because the cousin in them, you bought it from this person. The grandfather died, left it. So the family having a dispute. But this family is in his name. He didn't sold it to you. You setting up shop, and now here come the cousins and them like, nigga, it's our land, nigga. They tripping. It's the chronic players. This is not your average show. That's how I ended up going to Africa for a number of reasons. Number one, they invited me to come and ask for me to bring my JT skills to Africa to help their young population with the independent game. Mm -hmm. They was impressed with the movies. They impressed with me making books, albums, uh, being part of so many influential people's careers, playing parts from the background. But the other part, somebody told me, JT, you know you got trap flicks. Do you know in Africa they got software guys that live in the village? Mm -hmm. And he might look poor as ever, but he can make anything with the computer. The you you got to find the them. China's stealing that technology over there for them young brothers now. Nah, they definitely, they definitely, mm. they, listen, wherever knowledge is at, whoever get to it first is who going to benefit. Because a lot of times knowledge don't have the money. Right. Skill. That's like a dope ass rapper. Some dude right now rap better than Jay Z and Lil Baby put together and Drake, but we don't know him yet. He raw as ever. Right. Somebody know him. He ain't connected to the right person yet. That's what I found in Africa. The dudes who made my software, you would think these are just some poor guys. So, how did they come to invite you? Like, how did it happen? Man, somebody, I don't know. I, I don't even know how to Africa, because I don't know nobody in Africa. But one of they uh, big people called for a delegation from Black America, entertainment, film, entertainment, entrepreneurship, uh, a basketball coach to, find, to see their basketball dudes, to see if they can get some type of thing, or baseball, basketball. Uh, they had a doctor dude that was part of the delegation to try to bring how to help them with the malaria or different, you know, Illnesses, sicknesses. So I, I was just part of a delegation that represent music and entrepreneurship. So they did their background on me. They're like, we want him. So I'm like, Sh I want first class round trip. I want hotel, food, everything. You feel me? I wasn't charging them, but they like, we'll pay for all of that for you. We want you there bad. So when I go, I'm thinking I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit them for some money. I end up going to a place that's really poor. I'm not finna get the bag. I'm thinking, you know, Africa, I know I heard about is rich and is poor, but I landed in the real poor. But I felt a certain kind of way, like maybe these people need me. So I asked them, how can I help? You know, I got a few dollars. I want to, you know, what can I do to help? And he called a meeting with the chiefs. And uh, they came back from the meeting. He said, well, we don't want your money, but if you want to help us, we need water. Look at this place. If you could help us with a water well, all of our villages, all the tribes could benefit off this water well. I said, how much is it? It's 6000 I said, man, I could pay for that right now. Man, I paid for that water well. Man, do you know within 24, 48 hours, a truck pull up. I see this big stick come out. I'm talking about they put a thing on it instantly, straight to the ground. I'm trying to figure out how, uh, like, where the water coming from. You know, a water well, I thought they dig a hole and bring the water to fill it. They're like, no, the water's under the ground. Mm. The water a thousand feet, we're really nine hundred feet. We could go three hundred feet, JT, for three thousand dollars, but the quality of the water might not be right. But if we spend the six thousand, we can go down nine thousand. I mean, nine hundred uh, feet, and that's where we could get the purest water. Probably the best water you ever had. Man, listen, I say go on, go 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 down. I want to get the good water. Man, when that water, I taste that water. I mean, it took a, it took them it took them some hours, 
but I'm just tripping on how they putting this metal stick down. I'm like, damn, so the water finna come out from right here in this dry ass, looking like desert type. Man, if we just had enough money to pay for all this drilling, we could have the water. I'm like, why y'all just don't do it for your people? Y'all got a truck right here. Because the truck man want money and we can't pay for it. Mm. Imagine a whole village full of people, they can't afford $6,000 to pay for a water with. Because they still got to buy food and they got to pay for their internet and they still got to pay their rent. And it's, so collectively chipping in money, I would think $6,000, shit, I see... Three, four thousand people right there. Their this is poor. Is this is the yeah. real poor JT. So this water you about to donate for us, I say I want to put my mama name on it. I want to call this Mama Pearl's Water Well. So I can call my mama and tell her I'm doing something good. I want her name to go on this. Mama, look, all these people finna get clean water. Now look right over here at this dirty water with goats and cows and people taking baths and different shit. They got to get this water to cook with tonight. I say, uh-uh. So I switched my, my heart from what can I get from them to, man, 6000 bro. You could blow that money in Atlanta on the weekend going to get some outfits, you know, some bottles, some sections. Like, you could blow 5000 in California, I'm Jesus. pretty sure, on, on, yeah. with nothing to show for it. Mm -hmm. But to pay for that, I my think that was... do it every day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> every day that money disappeared into the oh, night. Fucking 30000 in the strip club to some naked ass like holes and shit. Like it's nothing and shit. Nothing. But won't give a dollar if you tell if you call it over there and ask them same cats, hey bro, donate five hundred dollars each. They'll look at you like you was crazy. Hell yeah, they'll look at you. You know the 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 uh, I think in my whole life that was the best thing up to that point that I ever did in my life. Cause I'm like, damn, this little bit of money, and they talking about this water well should last years, not. It, like the water don't run out. It's a lake up under there. Once they put that suction thing and whatever lake is under there, man, they putting that water up. When did you, you know, I want to go back to something. I want to go back to, because we talked about Atlanta, right? The grimy side. Everywhere you went, it seemed like you purchased property. Yes, sir. What neighborhood was that? Was, or was that Alabama where you bought a whole city block? That was Alabama. And it wasn't a whole city block, it was like a half. And it wasn't a big block, but it was big enough for me. You know what I mean? It had a building on it. And uh, But before that, I bought land in uh, West Side Atlanta, Dixie Hills, Bankhead, where T.I. and them from. And they were selling houses for 12000 8000 ugly beat up houses. This 2010. I, I was there for two years. I bought my first house for 25000 for my homeboy. He bought 10 houses. I'm like, damn. You only uh, 28 years old, and I'm out here struggling in the Bay, paying this rent, and you down here owning 10 houses. He like, bro, you should leave, you know, come to Atlanta, boy, because it's like you can own a house and the music popping. And Zaytoven, that's my little brother. I taught Zaytoven how to make beats. He knew how to and play. You were very keyboard. influential down there. Yes. When and then I just said, forget it, man. I moved in the house, I paid the rent. I remember it was $1,000. I moved out there with 2,000 to my name. I just knew I was going to the right place. I didn't know exactly how I was gonna make it. But I had a magazine that me and Snoop started called Mandatory Business. I said, I gotta get my first customers. I got some samples to show the magazine. Cause at that time, magazine still was popping. Mm -hmm. But I had to get people to believe in my magazine and pay me so I could press the magazine up. I remember it took me about four months to get my first customer. Once I made that first hundred dollars, I said, boy, I'm never gonna forget you. You the beginning stages of me being independent in Atlanta. My first hundred dollar transaction off of something I'm selling and it ain't dope. Mm. I'm finna put this nigga at, give him his own page in my magazine. It costs $5,000 for 5,000 full color magazines. Uh, UV coating, 80-pound paper, uh, 60 pages. You know, I know my math. I'm selling pages for 100, 200. I'm selling the front cover for two, 3,000. I sell it for 1,000 because I can give you your copies with you on the front and give another guy his with his covers on the front. So my, 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 my printer was working with me, and that's how I was able to have the extra money to feed my family. And then my catalog was going through digital distribution, paying me a check every 30 days. So I, I balanced them two things together, and that's how I was able to maintain 
and build up some money. But I'm like, I can't keep paying no thousand dollars of rent. I'm gonna buy this house for twenty five thousand. Mm-hmm. I built up enough. I gave them half. I was giving them two thousand here, fifteen hundred, you know, till it was paid off. The land across the street, they wanted nine thousand, about a little less than an acre directly across the street. I'm like, if I buy this, boy, I'm finna be on. The man agreed to sell it to me. Now I got a house and I got this land right in the middle of the hood mm-hmm. of all this gang shit, dope dinner. I'm talking about this is, but I'm like, I feel right at home because this is my house and this is the shit they say you supposed to shoot somebody for. Now, if nobody bothered me here, I'm good. But I remember the first niggas that came and I remember they was breaking in the train and my wife called me because I put cameras up and say, babe, it's two niggas outside in front of the house. They looking at the train. I say, I'm on my way. I come back over there. I'm like, hey, bro, I bought this house and this property right here. Woo, woo. They're like, yeah, man, we, we on the train. I say, nah, that's cool. You know, but my wife calling me, bro, y'all on the side of my house right here. You feel me? They're like, man, we've been robbing trains for here for years. But I say, bro, I got kids and shit up in the woods. He like, man, I say, all right, stay right here. I went in the house, got my strap, came out. The nigga said, come on, bro, let's start walking. They start walking down the street. I just start shooting in the air. Wow, 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 wow. Don't never come back up here no more, <laughs> nigga. Because, boy, to have my wife call me, and I got right. babies yeah, in this house. Yeah, you got to protect Man, me. and I'm in a new hood. This is my first altercation. I say, nigga, at my house, I'm shooting. So I just want a nigga to know. Now, I know they could have came back, did yeah, whatever. Run here, I'm like, nigga, this is my land, though, nigga. This is mine. I'm going all gas, no brakes. A couple of the OGs saw what happened. They told them niggas, man, fall back from that nigga up there, bro. Because he up there, he going to shoot. But he ain't been bothering nobody around here. You feel me? So I started meeting more niggas. Then we all kind of got cool. But I just, that was my introduction. Pinocchio, we gon' tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Gangsta chronic, this is not your 